okay? Mic on, can everyone hear me? Amazing, perfect. I will warn you, uh, even though I teach uh, two times a week, this is my first ever conference talk, so please be kind. Um, all right, so, yeah. Um, all right, so, I love images. Who loves images? Woo, we love images, amazing. Um, so, why am I qualified to talk to you about images, specifically for responsive images? Well, I have a BA, uh, honors in art history, so random, I know. Um, <laughs> so I've started a lot of paintings. Um, I've also, back in the day, I worked as a keyworder for a stock image company. If you don't know what a keyworder is, it's something like, if you have an image like this, you would say, girl, photographs, gallery, white, floor, jacket, backpack. I did not last long. So, <laughs> um, but I have actually been a front-end developer for seven years now, um, and uh, I'm currently the lead developer for Out of the Sandbox, and we make Shopify themes. I don't work for Shopify, but we make the themes that go on Shopify. So, um, one of the things that we're doing right now is we're working on a new theme, and we want it to be the fastest and best <laughs> theme out there. But one of the things that we found as we were developing it is that we <laughs> encountered a lot of bottlenecks, specifically with images, because people, when they're selling things, they like to have big, beautiful images, and so they upload the largest images they can find. So we found that <laughs> the sites were getting a little slow, so we had to figure out a way to solve that. So, that's what I'm going to talk to you about, is how we can actually improve our development process to make our sites deliver perfect images at any size, regardless. So, I keep on pressing the arrow and it's not going forward. Okay, uh, our goal today is to excellent visual experience across all devices, okay? So, whether um, we are talking about your phone, your tablet, your giant TV, whatever, we want to make sure that you have the best images possible. Okay, so big images. Big images aren't going anywhere. Uh, it's kind of like my, my analogy is when newspapers first realize that, hey, ooh, we can print in color. Well, first off, we'll just start with the comics. And then we'll add some other new photo, you know, photos and color and this kind of thing. But it's not like there's many newspapers out there that are like, you know what, forget color. We're just going to go back to black and white. It's fine. It's cool. When you have these new advances and the ability to have these big hero images, designers embrace it and they love it and they want to use it. So there's no point in saying, well, maybe it'd be better if we just had like a teeny little image instead. You're going to have a really hard time convincing any art directors of that. So as developers, we need to make sure that we can embrace this sort of new world order of giant big images. But the problem with big images is that they cost a lot. It costs a lot in terms of bandwidth and um, the size of these images. So for instance, who, fam who is familiar with Unsplash? A couple people, if you're not familiar with it, please go to it right away. It's amazing. Basically, um, and all the images from my presentation, in my presentation, they're all from Unsplash. All from Unsplash. This one's probably my favorite is a horse. Um, <laughs> so it actually costs uh, Unsplash, they worked it out to be almost $18,000 a month to run Unsplash, meaning that uh, to serve up these massive like 5,000 pixel wide images, that's how much it costs to serve them to people and for them to download and upload and bandwidth and crazy. Okay. So um, we want big images. We also want a high quality uh, high quality across our devices. So I want a consistent browsing experience. If I am watching TV, sitting on my couch, on my phone, I want, if I'm looking for a new pair of sunglasses or something like that, I want to make sure that the images that I'm seeing on my phone are still high quality enough that I feel comfortable purchasing them on my phone. If I'm only getting the full experience when I'm on desktop, eh, I'm probably not going to buy something. Um, it used to be, people always thought that, okay, when someone looks at their phone, when they go on their mobile device, it's only if they're going to look up directions or look at something really quickly. It's not the case anymore. Studies have shown that, oh, I don't have any numbers, but studies have shown um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that people are more likely, they're, they're the um, rate of uh, use on uh, mobile and tablet devices, people will actually purchase things when they are um, on their phone. I've done it. Uh, there's really cool things now where you can actually even take a picture of your credit card and it will automatically pull the numbers from your credit card and you can just purchase something right away. Fabulous. So um, we want to make sure that uh, our images are 
fantastic across the board. And also, we have to think about uh, the people that may not have uh, access to these like huge monitors and great displays. Some people might just have you know, the computer at the library, or they might just have their mobile phone, and that's it. So we have to think about them as well. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so here's the other thing too. Reduce load times. Uh, so I don't want to wait. I hate waiting. Who hates waiting? Everyone. No one, no one likes to wait. So I want to make sure that um, my images are going to load as fast as possible. And I also want to make sure that um, the images that I'm loading aren't massive. Because this is a true story. Uh, your non-resized non images will actually drain data plans. Um, uh, there was another developer that he had a great story. He was doing some testing for his QA team, which is uh, quality assurance, and um, he kept on refreshing the page and clearing the cache so that he could see what was going on. And he was actually using his 3G or whatever. And he did, was doing this you know, for uh, a couple, a few times, and then he got a message, a little text message popped up, from his uh, carrier saying, you have reached 90% of your data plan for the month because the images, the developers hadn't resized the images. So every time he was clearing his cache, he was having to re-download those massive images onto his phone, even though it's so tiny. So don't do that. Um, do, we really, like, do you really need 2,000 pixels on your you know, 320 uh, uh, pixel phone? Not so much. All right. so. <laughs> Spoiler alert, you've already seen the puppies, but here they are again. <laughs> um, so how do we actually, uh, how do we do this? So there's three main things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, unfortunately, not puppies, but still pretty good. So um, we have three sort of commandments that we're going to try to stick with. Um, we want it to be fast, we want it to be good, and we want it to be cheap. And we're going to try to make this work. Because who here has seen this before, sort of the whole idea? Yeah. So if you're designers or developers, a lot of times clients will come to you and they're like, yeah, so you know, I really want to get this done super quick, but I also um, don't have a lot of budget, and, but it needs to be like super, super good. So often people say, pick two. You get two. You don't get all three, you only get two. Um, so I honestly feel like this has been going on for a really, really long time, this whole idea of fast, good, and cheap, and this like client demand, this concept. You can even imagine like a Roman like art patron going like, yeah, so I want like the Sistine Chapel, like something along those lines, um, but I only have like a budget of three cows, two goats, and a couple of chickens. Oh, but I need it the next week because I have to impress the other guild members. Can we make that work? Like, it's, it's honestly just clients want it. So let's see, let's see if we can try to get something to work like that for our responsive images. So fast, how do we get our images to be served up to our uh, sites as fast as possible? Okay, well, here we have our go-to image types. Okay, so everyone is familiar with JPEG, PNG, SVG, and GIF. Okay. So you can see here, we've got Mona Lisa um, as a JPEG. So this, you would want to serve up an image like this uh, as a JPEG when it has no transparency, there is a lot of colors going on, it's a photograph, it's a, there's photo going, there's a, it's a, well it's not a photo, but it's a paint, it's a photo of a painting, you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> Uh, then we have PNG. So a PNG, you would want to use a PNG um, if you have a, a photo, but you need some transparency in there, okay? So, um, and a lot, a lot of designers really love doing this, where they'll have like a super complicated design, and it'll have a cutout where there's need some transparency in the back. The problem with this is that um, PNGs are, uh, can become very, very heavy. And some people always think like, oh, PNGs, they're always the, uh, you know, they're lighter. They're not. If you have a complicated uh, photo like Mona Lisa, you're better off using a JPEG if you don't have a transparency. Unfortunately, if you have transparency, you have to go with uh, the PNG unless you want to go down the route of uh, masking, but that's not quite supported yet, so we're not actually going to talk about that today, but it's worth investigating. Um, 
SVG is fantastic, uh, scalable vector graphic. So a PNG and a JPEG, those are both raster graphics, meaning that they have a certain amount of uh, pixels in them. And as you scale them up or down, the amount of pixels stretch and sort of fill in the space around the colors. Now, an SVG is actually created, um, it's vector, meaning that it's all created by math. So you can scale it up as big as you want and make it as tiny as you want, and it's always going to um, maintain the crisp, sharp edges. Okay? Now, uh, the last one we have is GIF. So a GIF, uh, it is, everyone knows of animated GIFs, of course. So if you want some animation, sure, use a GIF. They can add a lot of weight, depending on how they've been built. Um, a GIF can also sometimes be good for tiny little icons if they only have one or two colors. Um, uh, but, and they also do support transparency, but they're not as um, crisp as a PNG. Okay? But the best rule of thumb, honestly, is to try out the various image types and see which one is going to get you the smallest file size, because that is your goal. Okay, so the future. Ooh, what are these? Okay, did you know that there are actually hundreds of image types? Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, so Fliff, who's heard of Fliff? Oh, I see a couple hands, all right. Um, so that stands for Free Lossless Image Format. Uh, what about a BPG? Anyone heard of that? Yeah, okay. So Better Portable Graphic. Oh, forget JPEG. I like how they were like, well, a JPEG has the PG. We're just going to be a BPG instead. Um, what about WebP? Okay, awesome. Um, all right, so the thing is, there are, there's a lot of these different image types that are coming up, and um, everyone wants to kind of topple the, the long-standing rulers, like, get out, PNG, move on, JPEG, I'm the new king. But the problem is that they aren't actually fully supported across most uh, browsers, uh, not natively anyway. So, uh, like, WebP, it works in Chrome and Opera, great, but then you need to, to use some JavaScript to actually get it across the board. So I personally, I'm okay with using a little bit of JavaScript for, you know, IE and Opera Mini. That's cool. But if I have to use it in more mainstream browsers like Firefox and Safari, eh, I'm not, it's not quite there yet. But keep an eye on them and, you know, they could come around. Um, so uh, one of the things, too, one of the things about these new formats is, um, I'll be talking about this uh, in a bit, is that you can actually use progressive enhancement. So um, with the picture element, you can essentially say, hey, if you do support this image format, use it. But if not, hey, let's fall back to this other one, like a JPEG. OK? All right, so get some help. If you have all these images, instead of hosting them, on your own uh, server, maybe try considering using a CDN. So a CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And the way that I like to think about it is, OK, <clears throat> imagine you have a team of secret agents. Yeah, all across the globe, everywhere. You've got like teams here, teams there, teams here. Now, imagine you've discovered a crime syndicate in Calgary, Alberta, OK? Are you going to send your team from, I don't know, Paris over, or are you going to send your team that's closer from Edmonton down to deal with it? It's essentially what you're doing with the content delivery network, <laughs> is you're saying if a user is accessing a site from Russia, instead of serving an image from uh, one host over here and sending it all the way across, just think, the internet, ooh, ooh. The internet is just a whole series of uh, cables. <laughs> so um, what you would do is you'd actually send uh, an image that's from uh, a server that's closer to that location, and then it'll actually load quicker. Okay? So um, investigate CDNs. Uh, there are a bunch of different ones. Uh, some of them are free. Some of them are very cheap. But I, if you're not using them, then uh, I recommend investigating. Okay? Um, so, what about uh, caching? Caching is another way. Yeah, cashews. <laughs> eh, eh, yeah. Okay, this one's not from Unsplash, but it's uh, it, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so caching uh, is really uh, something that you want to be do make sure that you're doing because uh, if a user comes back to your site, 
that way, they don't have to download all of your images again if they're cached in the browser. Okay, so that means that it's a quicker, faster experience for them. Fantastic. Um, I would say that, so uh, there's a source down there, and I'll post my slides and this kind of thing, just more nitty gritty on how to actually um, uh, set up caching. Um, but be aggressive, be, be aggressive. If you have a logo on your site that is not gonna change in years and years and years, set a really long cache for that, that's cool. Um, but if you have, um, images that are going to be uh, updated, uh, they're I don't know, dynamically loaded or something like that, then maybe don't be so aggressive. Um, but just use your cache wisely, because it can help a lot. OK? Um, and then finally, to get things moving super, super fast, think about this. Um, do you really need that many images? I would say yes. But as Andrew uh, very wisely pointed out in his talk, you can get things to load super, super quick if you aren't relying on these massive, huge, heavy images. So I'm not saying eliminate images entirely. In fact, I'm not saying that at all. I say more images. But <laughs> um, if you have a site that um, is, uh, the user experience is being uh, problematic based on the amount of images that are having to be loaded or what have you, or you're finding that there's this, you know, there's a preloader that's just taking forever and ever and ever. It's not a great experience. Um, they're not, images aren't technically, they're not render blocking, so your site will still load the content and then the images load after the fact, but it still interferes with that experience where you see some content and then all of a sudden you might have an image that comes in and the height is increasing and this kind of thing. It's not, it's not great. So, just consider and use your images wisely. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, uh, how do we get our big, beautiful images as high quality as possible? How might we do this? Well, let's take a look at good. Okay, so we've investigated fast. So, fast would be making sure that your images are optimized uh, as much as I can. Make sure that you're using the correct image format for your images. Uh, use a content delivery network. Use caching. Um, and make sure that you uh, are really thinking wisely about how you're adding images to your site. So let's talk a little bit about good. How can we make our images as high quality as possible without having to load a 3,000 pixel image onto a little smartphone. What are, what are some things we can do? Well, wouldn't it be amazing and awesome if we had a way uh, to download an image to our site that was specific to um, a user's uh, device? And what I mean by that is if I'm looking at something on my phone, then only the small image is going to download. That's it. Now, if I look at something on a large laptop, then I'll get the higher quality version of that image, but uh, I'm not going to be downloading that huge image onto the phone. Okay? So, how do we achieve this? Well, first, we need to make sure that we actually have these different sizes of images. Okay? So, this isn't something that just sort of happens magically out of the box. If we want to be able to um, serve up a smaller image on a phone, then we're not going to need, we're, we're going to need to have a version of that image that's smaller. Makes sense, right? So, um, if you're using a content management system, so WordPress, for example, Shopify, for example, there's often um, things sort of already in place that resize the uploaded images on the server for you, okay? So, uh, Shopify, for instance, will actually, you can upload an image um, as large as you want, but the maximum size image that it will uh, allow you to use is 2048 by 2048, okay? Um, WordPress, in the same way, you can uh, set um, uh, in your functions uh, PHP, you can actually set uh, different image sizes to automatically be created when you upload an image. Now, if you're not using um, a content management system, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit later about how you can use task runners um, to, uh, well, I'm not going to talk a huge amount about it, but I will mention it because I um, know there's another talk that's going to 
go on to that. But there are basically you want to automate um, this process because no one wants to be going into uh, Photoshop and like writing a little script and re resizing all your images. But you can do that as well. Um, and then just upload the images that way. But ideally, you want a process that is a little more um, automated, OK? Um, yeah. So uh, we need to make sure that we have our different image sizes. OK. So uh, if you take a look at this example, you'll see that, and I, huh, I didn't update my slide. I do actually have a version that's uh, kitten-extra-large large as well. Um, which is uh, 2048. But here's just an idea of some image sizes that you could uh, potentially use. This is dependent on whatever your design is. Okay, So um, it's obviously not set in stone that the large has to be 1024 by 768. Uh, you don't even need to really use these sort of the naming convention. But I do find that um, uh, it, if you aren't, don't have a way of um, uh, if, sorry, what am I trying to say? It makes things more organized, because you can just read it and see it, large, medium, small, amazing, OK? So if you have a consistent um, uh, way of approaching this, where it's like, OK, well, I know that my medium image is always going to be uh, 640 wide, and then from there, you can obviously use um, uh, CSS to change how large that image is going to be. But the cool thing is, is that with um, some of the new advancements uh, in our image resizing, we can actually say, hey, uh, in this situation, use the large, but in this situation, use a medium. Okay? So before we get into that, we need to make sure that we have image source files with their width in pixels. Perfect. We have that. And then we also need more information about how big these images are going to be on our website. Because there's a big difference between an image that might be a hero image, so taking up the entire 100% width of the page, or an image that's going to be, uh, you know, maybe it's only 25% of the page. OK? Those are two very, very different things. So we need to know um, uh, how wide our images are that we can use. And we also need to know when they're on the site how big they're going to be on the screen in the viewport. OK? All right, let's go. Let's do this. So um, we have, let me check my time. Be good. So here are new friends. Yay, new friends. Um, we've got source set, we've got sizes, and we've got picture. Who here has seen these before? Yay, aren't they fun? Amazing. OK. <laughs> so um, they are source set and sizes. I like to think of them as the cool kids. Um, because picture, it's used a lot less. Um, I think the reason for that is source set and sizes you can apply directly to your already existing image element, whereas uh, picture, it is sort of a new additional element. So um, it's a lot less popular picture, but we'll still go over how do we actually use that. OK. What a difference a year makes. <laughs> so crazy, so crazy. Um, so this is the browser support for source set. Above is 2015, below is 2016. So you can see that IE and Opera Mini, well, there's still a problem, but don't worry. We've got a way to fix that. Um, but really, other than that, it is widely supported. So if you've been holding off using responsive images, being like, well, I don't know, they're not really supported, not anymore. Use them now. OK? All right, so here we have source set. Source set is super cool. Basically, uh, oh, you can't quite see. There's, there's commas at the end of there. Um, but source set, what it does, um, which is pretty neat, is it allows you to um, give a comma-separated list of different image sizes and then give information uh, either with the width descriptor or the pixel density descriptor. And it will actually allow you to, um, when your browser loads your HTML document, it will look at your image, and it will look at the source set and say, hey, hmm, seems to me that the extra large image would be the best one to load right now. Cool, I'm going to load that one. Or depending on the circumstances, it might load the medium or the small. Small is kind of rare because it's only 320 width. but um, so. The top is the pixel density. 
So uh, 3x uh, versus 2x, the default is just 1x. The x's, uh, so 2x refers to the fact that if you have a, a retina, for example, then it's double the amount of pixels, okay? The pixel density uh, from everything, I, I have only really ever used this one, pixel density from everything that I've read and um, seen online, it's not, I wouldn't recommend it, <laughs> um, the pixel density, only because the, in the end, when you combine source set with sizes, it essentially works out to be the same thing in terms of the math. And for me, it's a lot more helpful to have an exact idea of like, okay, the extra large is 2048. It's right there. You can see exactly how big that image is. Whereas um, up top, uh, e there's a little less information in terms of how big those images are. So I'd recommend going with the um, width over the pixel density. Um, okay, so we have a way to send, uh, we have a way to give this information to our browser, which is great. So this is how we tell the browser, hey, here's all the images we have available. But that's not the full story, because right now our browser is assuming that all of these images are going to take up the entire 100% width of the page, which as we know is not always the case. So how do we fix that? How do we say, right, well, uh, I see that you're loading in the extra large, but in fact, it's only taking up you know, a quarter of the screen, so we don't really need the extra large at this point. So that's where we use <laughs> da, 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 sizes. Yay, sizes. Okay, so sizes are really cool. Um, they, does this look familiar to anyone? The, the min width and then the, does that look familiar? Yeah, so anyone that's used media queries before. This is not a media query, this is what's called a media condition. Okay, so it's just the snippet of the media query that is actually um, uh, sort of giving the information of like, hey, this has to be a min width or a max width, but you use them in the same way. So sizes, they, um, what you want to do with sizes is, this is basically saying, so if we, there's a translation, which is very nice. Um, so if the viewport is wider than 769 pixels, then the image is only going to be 25 VW, okay? Um, so, and that VW stands for viewport width. So that means that it's gonna be only 25% of the viewport width. So that means that it doesn't make sense to serve up a larger image because it's only gonna be smaller. Now, and then the comma, you can see here, I could add in as many of these um, uh, media conditions as I wanted, but I really only have two. So, um, and then I'm gonna say, hey, anything below 769 pixels is just gonna be 100 VW. And I'll show you what, um, oh, and I hope I don't mess anything up if I drag this over, but I'm gonna give it a go. Um, <laughs> okay, so, oh, geez, Louise. Oh, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> no. Dang it. All right. I, this is not similar to my... Okay, tell you what, if anyone's interested in seeing it working in action, come on up afterwards and I will show you. Um, so what I was basically just gonna show you is that, uh, uh, just a working example, but if, you, if anyone would like to Google right now, you can just find an example of um, source set working where if you load it um, in your, uh, like if you have, um, if you're using your web inspector and you have it on mobile view, it's going to load a smaller version of the image and then so on and so forth as it gets larger. I have it on here. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I don't probably don't have time anyway. Okay. So, picture. Uh, this is um, uh, very cool. Uh, you can see now. This is um, even more impressive, I think, the browser support from 2015 to 2016, because you can see it was like really it was only uh, Chrome and uh, Opera, and they have the same backend anyway. So of course they're going to be the same um, that we're supporting it. Whereas 2016, ah, yes, it's still only IE and Opera Mini, but we can, uh, 
we can still use this. So the way the picture works is that it actually wraps around the image element, okay? So it's not an attribute like source set or sizes that gets added to the image, it's actually wrapped around it. So um, it, it works a little bit uh, differently. Some people uh, prefer picture because, again, going back to progressive enhancement, you can see here that if I wanted to um, use a WebP, for instance, then uh, what it's going to do is my browser is going to look at this and be like, oh, I see, I see, I'm Chrome, I can use WebP, cool, I see you have a WebP for me. Why, thank you, I will use that instead of a JPEG. Um, and it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so it's nice, and also the, but you can see here that it's a little broke, it's more broken up in terms of how you're defining your um, media conditions, because uh, the first uh, example, source, and then we have the source set, of, so it's still using um, the, uh, although is that a, yeah, uh, so kit and large, and then the media is, there's another attribute called media, and then so the actual um, media condition is defined there instead, okay? Um, yeah, so uh, whichever you prefer to use, I'd say try out both, it's kind of fun, but again, I would say that uh, I would, recommend a source set and sizes versus picture, personally. Okay, um, um, I'm just gonna touch on this briefly, but one of the cool things about uh, responsive images is that it also allows for art direction. Uh, so for example, you can see in the first um, image, the kitten large is sort of full, you can see more of the scenery. The kitten medium is more cropped in, and then kitten small is really zoomed in, so again, uh, it's nice because the uh, because these are completely different files. You can do whatever you want with the images that you're serving up at the different sizes. So if you had a picture of a tiger on the desktop, you could make it a picture of like a tiny kitten on mobile. <laughs> totally possible. Okay. All right. Cheap. Finally, last one. Okay. So cheap. Uh, Okay, I have to be a little bit honest about this. I'm not technically talking about money in this case, so results may vary in terms of <laughs> success. What I'm actually talking about is the amount of JavaScript that we need to use in order to make um, responsive images work across every single browser, okay? So uh, we wanna minimize our development time, which development time is ours, so, and you know, time equals money. So. Things that we want to do and make sure we're, we're um, being aware of. We're going to automate our tasks, right? Um, we're going to make sure that when we're resizing our images, we are doing that um, as effectively as possible. We're going to use the smallest amount of JS to make life easier. And we are going to make sure that we have good cross-browser support by using that JS, OK? Uh, da, da, da. So automate resizing. Um, I'll just quickly touch on this because I'm Looking at my time. Um, a, we want to make sure, there's a couple different ones that I found. Uh, truth be told, I haven't used either of these services because, um, well, I'm using Shopify and it resizes it for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, you can actually, there's adaptive images or uh, squeezer it, and they'll, this is actually a way to uh, send your images to get them automatically resized. Um, it's cool. Uh, task runners, so if you're doing sort of more of a, a smaller project that maybe just has client images as opposed to user uploaded images, you might want to try, if you're using Grunt uh, or Gulp, there's two options right there. Um, is everyone familiar with task runners? If you're not, yeah, Grunt or Gulp, amazing. I don't know, it's like broccoli, I've never used it, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, so, investigate those, basically just make your life easier, okay? Um, right. Oh, so sad. I had to get, find a sad picture for IE Opera Mini. <laughs> but the good news is, yay, Edge. Yeah, Edge totally fully supports picture, source set, and sizes. Amazing. But as we know, a lot of people are still working on IE 11 and below. So we still have to um, support them. So what do we use? We use picture fill. Picture fill is a polyfill. What is a polyfill? Uh, a polyfill is a piece of code uh, or plugin that uh, provides a technology um, that is normally you would expect to have that functionality across the board in every browser, but obviously we don't have that 
all the time. So a polyfill, what that does is it says, hey, you don't work the way you're supposed to, let's get you there. Um, and so picture fill is uh, a polyfill that uh, works for IE and um, Opera Mini. So great. Um, there are uh, quite a few um, different JavaScript libraries uh, that we can sort of have help with for responsive images. The nice thing about these, as you can see, all you need is a source set and sizes, but you can add a little panache uh, because some of these actually uh, allow for things like lazy loading, um, that sort of stuff. If all you want to do is have um, cross-browser support, Picture Fill's the only one you need. But let me talk about my favorite, which is Lazy Sizes. It's awesome. Um, lazy Sizes, it is not only does it um, give you uh, cross-browser support, they actually have a smaller uh, uh, polyfill that you can use if you're already using lazy sizes. Um, but the nice thing is, is that you can use source set and sizes and you can use lazy loading. Lazy loading is a type of, I don't know if this is technically the term, but micro interaction where you present something to a user as something is happening so that it's like a loading bar kind of thing so that the user's like, oh, I have a pretty picture to look at. Oh, nice. Oh, that didn't take long at all versus just nothing happening. So um, lazy loading is really great for that because it enables you to uh, add classes that uh, can, you can then take off when something is loaded. For example, um, the Shopify theme that we're working on, um, what we do is we load in the smallest image size first, which is on Shopify's compact, okay? So we load in this very small image, regardless of how big the image is on the screen. We load in that one first, but it's blurred. Then, as we're waiting for that other larger image to be downloaded, then we transition out of that blur, and it becomes a full, crisp, clear image. It's a really nice effect. If I could figure out how to go back, I'd show you, but <laughs> maybe that. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so and I also, there's a link uh, there for the polyfill um, that goes along with lazy sizes specifically. I really like it. I'm, I'm a big fan. Okay. Um, uh, oh, actually, <laughs> good. Maybe I will, and then I'll figure out how to show it. Okay, so final thoughts. Um, as we go on this journey together of responsive images, um, Make sure that you're educating your client about the side effects of large images, okay? Don't just allow them to be like willy-nilly, you know what, my entire page is just gonna be photos from my vacation. I don't know, client, maybe that's not such a great idea. But if they're a photographer, maybe that is an amazing idea. So you really have to think about your need, the needs of your client and serve them as best as possible. Uh, don't let yourself be constrained to text only. So yeah, make sure there's some, some images in there. Start using source set, sizes, and picture uh, today because you can, um, especially with a little polyfill. Uh, yeah, the more, so the cool thing about them is that the more they're used, uh, the quicker browsers will implement the desired functionality. This goes, this is not specifically just for responsive images as well. This is for any sort of cool spec that you've read about and you're like, oh, it's amazing, I wanna use that, like masking and this kind of stuff. If you think that um, it should be native across all browsers. Start using it in your site today with a polyfill so that, you know, or um, you could, uh, uh, as long as it is, um, it still looks okay on older browsers. Because the thing is, um, browsers actually look to see what people are using and they'll update their browsers based on that. So you can see that a lot of people were using source set sizes and picture, and that's why we now have them across the board. And IE is not going to update because now we have Edge. So yeah. Um, but uh, it's just a good rule of thumb to make sure that uh, you're always sort of pushing the boundary, pushing the boundary, pushing the boundary. So um, fast, good, and cheap. Uh, in the end, we can't quite get all of those beautiful circles to overlap. But at least we can get our beautiful, high quality images to uh, load super quickly and explain to our clients that, well, you know, your images are loading super fast, but no, we can't deliver that social network in under two weeks. Sorry about that. So thank you so much for listening, and that's the end of my presentation.
We have a minute for questions, if anyone has one. not using source set in sizes and picture. <laughs> um, but I would say that I think a lot of, um, it's interesting in terms of the workflow of designers to developers, not related to the responsive images, but I think that um, a lot of developers sometimes might not know how to use image editing tools as well as a designer. So I would say that it's important to kind of educate yourself on that so you know that hey, um, you can save as from Photoshop, and that's going to decrease your file size. But beyond the save as, there's ways that you can also decrease the file size that the designer might not know about. Um, before you even put those images up on the server, you can get rid of you know, uh, metadata. You can really strip things out and um, lossy versus this kind of stuff. So there's, th that's a whole other talk, which is super important as well. But yeah, as developers, if you're a developer, learn more about image editing and design, and if you're a designer, learn more about other things like code and stuff like that. It's always important to, to know both. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anne. And uh, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to ask her during the break, where you can go and do whatever you want for 10 minutes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>